Hi there. Assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon all of you. Let's have a bit of a different conversation today. Now, when it comes to understanding ourselves, one of the most fundamental questions we have to ask every day of our being, of our existence from ourselves is who are we? Why are we here? Unless we ask this question from ourselves, we will never know the true purpose of humanity. What is a human? Why are humans so different? Why are humans so different from all the animals that exist in the world? All the other animals don't have cognition. We have a capable mind that goes beyond fulfilling our basic and natural needs. It just seems like all the animals serve a certain purpose to the fundamental existence of earth as it is and the universe as it is. So that human beings, beyond fulfilling our basic needs, can explore, can create, can innovate, can coexist, can collaborate, can use our mind, harness the mind to develop technology, all of these things. Then why exactly are we so different? How exactly did we come to be? This question is very, very important if you are someone who is trying to figure out your place on earth. Now, when I started asking this question and, you know, just doing my own research on the matter, only then I realized one of the most fundamental questions that these particular questions leads to is who created us? How did we become, how did we come to existence? And that is where the crux of this video is going to deal with. The Big Bang Theory and also the theory of natural selection, evolution, survival of the fittest, call it whatever you want. These theories. And it really hit me when I just started reading this book called Sapiens, apparently a million copy bestseller by some, um, by a writer called Noah Harari. <laughs> and he starts his book, right? The, the first paragraph, the first line in his book is, about 14 billion years ago, matter, energy, time and space came into being in what is known as the Big Bang. Right? This is the first sentence of a book that goes up to about 500 pages. The first sentence, I'm going to repeat it and you have to very carefully listen to me. About 14 billion years ago, matter, energy, time and space matter, energy, time and space came into being in what is known as the Big Bang. This is unprecedented. Okay, because the first problem I had when I started reading it was he is presenting this like it is fact. And he was not there 14 billion years ago. And I realized that in a lot of modern scientific textbooks, especially given to school children, you have this idea slowly coming up. You have the theory of natural selection and even Da Vinci hasn't proven it. Nobody has proven these things. Then why is it being so embedded in our minds? This is the problem I have. And this leads to a very, very dangerous issue because the biggest problem with believing the Big Bang Theory with choosing to believe the Big Bang Theory or with choosing to believe the theory of evolution, the theory of natural selection, with choosing to believe, because if you believe that the Big Bang created the world, it means that every single thing that happens is a coincidence, right? Out of a thousand and infinite possibilities, one particular possibility sparked the creation of Earth. One particular possibility created uh, matter. It's all a coincidence or the theory of natural selection that only the fittest survive. If you believe these things, do you know what will happen? And actually what leads to is that you forget or rather you believe that there is no consequence to your actions. If everything is a coincidence and if you were born out of a coincidence, which is not true at all, right? You were born out of a reproduction process that two human beings engaged with. 
that is no coincidence at all right so if you believe that everything is happening in terms of a coincidence if you believe in the big bang theory or that you are the product of the survival of the fittest you are the product of natural selection you believe that there is no consequence to your actions because you fundamentally are directed to believe that there is no creator and that you have no one to answer to for whatever you do because come on the world came into being by big bang right so after we die it's it's just a life gone we can do whatever we want on earth right we can say truth say the truth we can pursue the lie we can have fun we can go party we can uh, destroy people's lives right? we can become billionaires we can make other people poor we can subjugate we can oppress we can be little we can bully there is nobody to answer to and this is what these kind of writers need this is what a lot of secularistic a lot of the human oriented sciences lead us to they lead us away from holding responsibility holding accountability this is very very unprecedented and that is where islam comes in beautifully wonderfully because islam is a religion okay islam is a religion that requests you that invites you not requests but invites you every single human being on earth to critically think to look at everything that is going on everything that is going on around you to critically think to scientifically think and to see and to understand the patterns of the world right today for example i will make another video on this but if you take the video the concept of money money is just a form of representation of numerals numbers you have 10 100 1000 numbers and numbers are arabic numerals the entire numerical system that the entire world is based on the new york stock exchange the pages of a book the way you count your children everything is based on arabic numerals that is fundamentally brought up by the quran and the earliest mathematicians were arabic scientists right but but later on there were certain issues because of the modesty of the religion so the point is this just as islam suggests and by no means i want you to misunderstand me i'm not asking you to believe in islam i'm just inviting you to critically think do not believe these things do not believe theories like the big bang theory or the natural selection or the existence of the creator blindly blind faith is what these kind of people with ulterior motives need because if you blindly believe that money is what is going to save you you're going to chase it so far so far that you'll have you'll when you when you hit a point you'll realize this is so futile right people want you to blindly believe things people write thousands of books because they want you to drive toward a certain faith and you have to blindly believe it the person whoever wrote this is doing this very deliberately so be careful be careful of blind faith do not believe things i repeat this do not believe the news do not believe what your friend says do not believe what your son says do not believe what your mother says do not believe what your brother says out of blind faith critically think critically analyze use your brain use the faculties that god has embedded within you use them god invites us to do this continuously over 100 times in the holy quran critically think because islam is a religion like that it is so modest that it says several times that there is no compulsion in religion lakum deenukum waliya deen that is my religion is for me your religion is for you so i invite all of you whoever is watching to use the critical faculties in your mind 
Use your brain. Don't believe things blindly. And figure out the purpose of you on earth. Figure this out. Every person can do it. Every person deserves to understand the truth. And the truth is only one. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And may peace be upon all of you and your loved ones. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.